Welcome back to my channel. My name is Punzo and if you're new here, welcome. Um, if you are new, please hit that subscribe button and the like button if you actually enjoyed the video. Plus the little notification bell right next to the subscribe button so that you get informed as soon as I post a new video. Um, so, hi guys. And how are you all doing? Um, so, um, um, anyway. Uh, so today, on today's topic, what does Punzo want to talk about? Well, Funzo wants to talk about something very important, consent. Sexual assault, sexual harassment, rape, and consent. So that's what I want to talk about today. That's what I want to add my views on. You know, we want to get talking about something that, um, for some reason, some people seem to find it difficult to understand when it comes to consent. And say it's very complicated, which is not. Consent is actually not complicated at all. Um, unless you are a rapist that just wants to now say, ah, it's, it doesn't make sense, ah, da da da, all of those things. But consent is very simple. And what do I mean by that? Okay. So, from what we know, and we, it has been discussed over the time, and people have kept telling you, and women have kept telling you this, and the police keep telling you this. If one of you is drunk, the one that is not drunk, or completely under the influence and they're still aware of what they're doing. And you sleep with the one that is drunk, cannot consent to whatever is happening. That is rape of the one that was drunk. If they are high and you are not high, it is rape because that person cannot give you consent. If it is a child, ne? For me, I, I would have preferred for them to put it at 18, but at the moment they put it at 16. So 16 and below is called statutory rape, which is just rape. It's rape. Because it's a child cannot give consent. And the consent is talking about from anybody from the ages of 18 and above, you trying to go for a child who is 16 and below. Okay. Also, what, what else? If somebody is asleep, meaning that they are unconscious, they cannot give you consent. So it is not consensual. So it is, say it with me, rape. Okay? Somebody consenting to sleeping with you once does not mean they gave you universal consent. It doesn't mean that tomorrow you get to sleep with them. You still have to ask for permission for the next time you want to sleep with them. Consent is not that, because I agree, this is not the terms and condition agreement. This one is one that gets renewed every single time you want to have a sexual encounter with someone. Okay? And consent can be withdrawn. You know, when we started the whole foreplay, we were doing our thing and all of those things. And then one of you goes like, no. Whoever said no needs to be respected. And whatever you all were doing needs to stop. Because consent was just withdrawn. And it is not that they were leading you on. They no longer feel comfortable with you to continue this thing that they were doing with you. So consent was withdrawn. And you should respect that. Okay? I feel like, is it the way that I've been explaining? It has not been, com like, it's not complex. It's not complicated. You are in a relationship. You are married. Doesn't matter which one. If your partner says no, it means no. None of that is confusing if your partner says they are withdrawing their consent. And by the way, for men, just because you paid a dowry or you're married to someone doesn't mean you automatically got consent. You still need to ask them if you can have sex with them. And they still hold the right to say no, even if they are married. Marriage does not mean that I have no choice anymore. It doesn't mean that rape cannot happen in marriages. If the partner is saying no, it means no. And if you go against your partner saying no, it is called again, say it with me, rape. 
I don't know why anybody keeps saying that consent is a complicated thing to get. There is nothing complicated about it. If that person does not have the ability to say no or yes, you cannot take that as consent. This is the same thing when like people go like, um, okay, but she didn't say no, but did she say yes? She didn't, so there wasn't any consent. And also, somebody, I don't know why some people have been getting confused when some people have been telling them, coercion is not consent. It's not you getting consent. It is rape. Because that person said no, and you kept on being persistent. They said no. You, you persisted again. They said no. And then until you finally wore them down and they said yes, they didn't actually want to say yes. They said no a bunch of times, and you just kept on pushing them. It could have been you were pushing them first by words and then physically. I'm saying that these things are not complicated. Coercion doesn't mean... This is the same thing as men not finding it creepy for them when a girl says... Um, they're like, oh my gosh, she's just playing hard to get. I know she wants me. I know she wants all of this. No, she doesn't. She told you. She literally said, no, I do not want you. You know, it was so funny for me when, when somebody... When there was a guy I was walking from the store when I was in Pretoria and the person stopped me and then like they greeted me, I greeted back and then they said, oh, hey, um, so can I have your number? I said, no. Like the person looked shocked and then they looked at me and were like, why did you say no? I said, just because I don't want to. That's it. There is nothing else besides the fact that I don't want to. I don't want to give you my number. I do not want to date you. You have this persistent man that think, oh my God, it's so romantic if I'm like running after. No, it's not. It's just creepy and you wore her down. She got tired. Of all of this. And by the way, I'm not just talking about she. It's, it's the other way around too. You, you cannot. For the life of life. You cannot force someone into something. And then you call it romantic. Like. I just. I just. I, I swear I cannot understand this. I just. I don't understand how somebody says that they're confused about something that is so simple to get. Like. You cannot be confused. You're choosing to be confused at that point. You, you, you. You are a rapist that just doesn't want to admit that you're a rapist at that point. I'm just saying. Because how are you telling me you're not understanding that it is complicated for you? That it is it doesn't make sense for you? I mean, I am married to her, so she cannot say no to me. We are together in this. Yes, yeah, she can. And if she said no and you still went right ahead to force yourself on her, you raped your wife, sir. Or she raped you. Whichever one. Or... You guys raped each other. I don't know why I'm putting gender on this. I'm so sorry for that. Um, you and your partner, there was rape that happened in between those situations. It just, you know, another thing that has been like, like that 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 makes my this is the gears grind. What do they say? Grinds my gears. Okay, <laughs> what what else grinds my gears? Um, is. A situation where, you know, in, in South Africa, like, there was um, there was the talk about gender-based violence or femicides and the rape culture, right? And in a lot of situations, women brought up that conversation of, like, the rape culture in South Africa, yeah? And they were talking about it, talking about, like, how, what is happening in, in, in their communities, what has happened to them. A lot more women can tell you their stories of um, sexual assault or rape, like, which is, you know, there's a very... A huge unsettling number of women who have gone through these situations there yeah? and um when, when you're talking about it besides a woman being gaslit by men or being invalid validated by men and sometimes women which is the saddest part of it all um you you also see a lot of people in their arguments about rape which i always wonder like when you you when when every single time yeah? that women are talking about rape and women the rape happening between uh, between rape happening to women and children eh? why you have both men and women coming into the comment section going like um you know there's also false allegations and these men are like in prison because of false allegation if you always have to counter if you always have to counter rape with a story of like five one to five percent of false allegations right but, but compared to the number of rapes that have also not been actually um reported i'm sure that number the percentage is even smaller than that and you have to come in and argue that you know um the other argument is men get raped too or um 
there is also false allegations. Listen, the percentage of false allegation to rape is small. And if the only time you think of speaking on the topic of false allegation is when um, it's when a victim is coming out talking about them being raped and a and a, and, a, and a group of people um, are trying to are in support of women and are trying to help women get justice for being raped. And your whole thing is just now start up going like, you know, there's people that are being falsely accused right now and are in jail. If that's your argument, you are part of the problem. You are one of those people that are rape apologists. One of those people who in your head, you actually think you don't believe in rape in your head. You, you want to justify rape with some statistics that is so small compared to the number of women who are sexually assaulted and raped every single day and children. Or if your counterpart is that men are also getting raped and then our cases are not being taken seriously. That is a thousand percent true. That they get laughed at, they, get, they don't get taken seriously and they're not believed as well. Which is what women are trying to fight. They're, they're victimizing the victim again. They're blaming the victim they're not caring or listening to a victim when they're telling you about the, the, the injustices that they are facing and the assault that they faced and you guys decided that you this like you, you are not going to listen to them and you do not believe them. That is what women are arguing against. That is what women are pointing out every single time that you are not listening to. Also, can I just say something? You know that situation of you going like, but men also, ne? Which for me, I'm pretty sure when women are fighting for for there to be a stop against gender by base, gender based violence and rape, is it is including everyone so that it, it helps everyone. If these laws and the and the police are actually doing their job, it will end up helping helping everyone in different communities because we are focusing on the fact that gender based violence or abuse or rape is a thing that is stopped countrywide. But also, as I was saying. Like it's like like imagine we have um we have this um what do you call them we have this um like we have um a cancer awareness one way it's like breast cancer awareness or lung cancer awareness or whichever cancer it is that um the people that that did the organization were focusing on right um when we are talking about breast breast cancer right tell me if if your whole argument is like if we talk about abuse you go like but men also get abused and if we talk about rape you also go like men get raped nobody is saying those things are not happening we're not saying men do not have problems we're not saying men do not have situations that are happening in them but if a woman decided that she got tired of it and she got tired of seeing her sisters being hurt and children being hurt in the hands of this man right or society and she said, I'm going to do, I'm going to start a movement. And then you want to let, you want to kill that movement because in your head, you want to justify it with that. It also happens to men as if it also happening to men somehow means it's not happening to women. Doesn't make any sense. And, uh, you know, in this segment, you have a year, a lot of men trying to victimize themselves because women are saying that you guys are dangerous. And the, what I was trying to go to in any case was that you realize that in these situations, if there is an organization that is organizing, it's organizing, gosh, if there's an organization organizing a protest on um, on cancer or, or an awareness campaign about breast cancer, right? Lung cancer people and colon cancer people or prostate cancer people or any other cancer people do not come in and say, why are you not talking about us? Why are we not involved in this? Why are we not in this situation? You know why? Because that organization was set up by somebody who saw a problem in this and this is what they wanted to talk about because this is what this is what their fight was for or this is what they want to they want awareness for it doesn't mean all the other cancers are not important it doesn't mean all the other cancers are not there but if you feel so emotionally about it get up stand up and make sure that you also vocalize not not as a not as a counter for for women abuse or for femicide or for rape not as a counter for that but as a as a as an organization of your own standing up to talk about issues that are affecting you not as a counter to what women are saying 
because a lot of these situations sometimes when you find out that um a man is talking about being raped in most cases it's another man that raped him so women and men we are having the same problem we're saying there is a group there is a people in this particular category that is abusing these people that is exactly what we want to stop we want to take away the power from these people we want them to pay we want justice for things that are done it's, i don't know why these things get lost because even when it comes to gender based violence things like that we are talking in most cases we're talking about men perpetuating these very same crimes and that's what women are saying we need men to take accountability for what is happening but you are so focused on it's not me it's not me i'm not gonna listen it's not me yeah that's all you want to focus on that's all you want to concentrate on that's all you want to talk about that oh my god i'm not the one that does it okay but when one of your friends was doing it you saw your one of your friends harassing a woman did you stop him or you was like wow oh, this is my nigga <laughs> he has good game <laughs> or you just kept quiet and looked the other side like nothing was happening see, see you are part of the problem because you can't even stand up to one of your own you will be like oh my god i will get hurt and you will just stand there not do anything you are just as guilty as that person that was actually doing the thing no, how many times you see guys just sitting there when you see when they see one of their friends hitting their wives right in front of them and they sit there and do nothing like nothing is happening and i'm not gonna do anything about it it is just annoying me the noise is annoying me they're not gonna do anything about it sir you might not have put your hands on that woman but you let that woman down so fast so bad because you just sat there as if you were not hearing her pain and somehow you think you're better than the person that was doing the beating. You said that that's your friend. You could have spoken to them about what they were doing was wrong. But why would you ever try to change a situation? I mean, come on. It's only just you and you cannot do much. <sighs> but also, again, when you talk about the conversation of consent, if you go to the beginning of this uh, video again, you will realize that consent is not complicated. You are just a rapist. But in any case we have come to the end of this video and i thank you guys for watching and for listening to me and uh, until next time